Welcome back to All Real Estate, All the Time with Whitney Nicely, where we teach you the foundation of real estate investing for profits. Now, here's Whitney. All right, so I told you the fun part of what happened last week, and I did not tell you about the work part of what happened last weekend. Because Even though that tequila is still work? Well, I don't drink tequila okay. anymore. I just found the old bottles, you know. <laughs> I, I, no, no, not me. So I... I work on the weekends, kind of. I mean, I was at the lake. After I left the studio, I'm at the lake all weekend, every weekend, as much as possible. And I've even gotten a bad habit now of staying on Sunday night and not coming back to work until like 10 or 11 on Mondays. (laughs) Hey, it pays me the bus. Yeah, it does. It really does. So last weekend, and I hope I can do this again this weekend. Like, I hope this is a pattern that is about to just blast upon me. But last weekend... I sold a house while I was at the lake, which is pretty cool because I barely have cell phone service up there. And we recently, like in June, mom installed Wi-Fi. So that was exciting. Oh, yeah. (laughs) We're now connected. Digital age. (laughs) We're now connected to the world. But there's only like two people that can be on it at a time. (laughs) So I try to pull rank and get the Wi-Fi at least on my laptop. But anyway, so I sold a house while I'm out on the pontoon boat hanging out, floating around, trying to keep ser- service. And, you know, that's that's pretty cool because that's what a lot of agents gripe about. That's what a lot of wholesalers gripe about. That's what flippers gripe about is, you know, it's Sunday afternoon. I want to be on the lake or I want to be taking a nap. I don't want to be hosting an open house. I mean, why, why did we start doing open houses? Do you know? I assumed it was so people could see the house. Right. And it was in about 1980. 1985 i mean sometime in the 80s is when open houses really became popular and if it happened before that i was just born in the 80s so i figured that's where all the great stuff started (laughs) and so that that's what i assume open houses started in the 80s and we didn't really have the internet al gore hadn't invented it yet so that's right yeah (laughs) we didn't have the internet now if you list a house and you have less than 20 pictures of it nobody's looking at it (laughs) okay or they're just blasting you saying can i have more pictures a mobile phone that's a little crooked yeah like there's no reason really to have an open house these days i don't think i mean i haven't had an open house since labor day of 2014 10 people told me they'd be there and i was thinking labor day would be awesome because people are out they want to look at houses no they're not they want to go to the lake and enjoy it they want to go to a barbecue they want to go see their friends and family they don't want to come look at a house they can do that any old time or they can do that while they're at the barbecue on their phone okay they don't need to come to my open house so 10 people told me they'd be there and zero showed up i was more than disappointed because i'd missed time at the lake with my friends and family and i'd taken a shower for this thing and nobody showed up so it was disappointing so i teach people now that you don't need to do open houses okay and i'm doing a webinar on it the on wednesday the 9th or 10th i don't remember what wednesday is but on on 9 a.m next wednesday coming up wednesday i'm doing a webinar on how you can sell houses without an open house and so I sold a house. I mean, I, I'm living proof of this. I've done like 40 deals since Labor Day of 2014, and I haven't done an open house since then. So I've got five different ways that I can teach you how to change your marketing, change your sellers so that they get out of that 1985 mindset and into 2016 and realize the better, faster, more effective ways that we have to sell a house without suffering through an open house. And I'll tell you, a lot of new agents, they, they cut their teeth at open houses because they need to practice talking to buyers they need to practice talking to sellers maybe you'll get a listing out of it maybe you'll sell something but i really don't think that you know three or four or ten percent commission is worth wasting your sundays for a whole year off one commission check like i just don't think it's worth it so i bark and preach on don't do open houses or if you do them do them my way and sell a house while you're still at the lake So I'll cover all that. If you're interested, you can go to allaboutrei.com and find out about it. Or send me an email. And lots of people email me from the show. It's info at WhitneyNicely.com. If you have a topic you want me to cover, let me know about it. So, okay. So I sold a house at the lake from the pontoon boat, right? From the pontoon with the koozie in hand. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) With my Yeti cup in hand. (laughs) And I rented one of our apartments. We have two units available, one in Strawberry Plains, or we used to have two units available, one in Strawberry Plains and one in Morristown. And as of this, they're both gone. So people rent it without even looking at it? Oh, they look at it. Okay. 
that. So not even you're involved in that deal. I'm at the lake. Wow. They qualify themselves. They fill out their application without me. They look at the property without me. They meet the neighbors without me. I mean, open houses are so crazy. Do I really need to go into this house and tell you what's the kitchen and what the selling points are about it? You can see if it has granite countertops or not. You can see if it's got stainless steel appliances or not. Now, if I've got a $45,000 refrigerator in this place, which I don't know if they even make one like that, I'll put it in the listing. I'll put it in the writing. I don't need to be there to show you all the features of it. Do Won't you just be there to talk it up, though? Isn't no. What, no? People like looking at houses without the agent there because if the agent's there, then you got to go over and you got to, like, whisper to your spouse or your mom. You'll be like, I don't really like the color in here. Okay. Why did they choose that? You know, but you can't down it because the agent's standing there and you're all like, hey, don't you love this place so I can get paid? No, I don't. Show me something better, <laughs> you know? But people people can tell if this is a bathroom. They can tell if this is the master bathroom. I don't need to walk in and say, and this is the master, and here's the regular-sized closet that's not impressive at all. Here's all the brass on the wall, on the handles. You don't need me there for an open house. I'm in the way. So let me just go do something else. I've got too much... Uh, energy for this kind of stuff anyway but anyway so I sold I think I sold and if if you're still interested in the pal house please go look at it because Friday yesterday I took another application on it so now I got two applications pending on this house and I've sold houses before to the fourth or fifth person that applied because they were the best fit so just because there's an application in, that does not mean it's over and done with. Go look at the house if you're interested in it. Um, and if you want to see what I have, whoa, if you want to see what I have, it's all on WhitneyBuysHouses.com. So if you are trying to improve your credit or you're waiting out of bankruptcy or you're self-employed or there's some reason that you can't just go get a mortgage, you don't look good on paper, look at my houses because I do lease options. I've got three available right now, one in Powell, one in Fountain City, and one in Talbot on Cherokee Lake. Well, across the street from Cherokee Lake, but pretty darn close to being on the lake. All right. So anyway, and then the third thing that happened to me last week was a bad thing. Uh oh. I don't know what happened between Friday at lunch and Saturday at lunch, but for about 24 hours, I was a complete grouch. Like Oscar the Grouch, don't come within a arm's length of me. You're getting your head bit off. Okay. Like, I, I don't know what happened. I, I, don't, I just, I can't explain it. But anyway, somebody texted me at two o'clock in the morning, Saturday oh. morning. And I have my phone on do not disturb from 10 until six. Like, you, it's just not going to bother me except when I wake up and the lights flashing and then I check it. But anyway, at nine, when I did come to and I was working on my coffee, my first coffee of the day. I checked my text messages from the night before and somebody had texted me at 1.55 a.m. wanting an application. And they didn't just say, like, uh, Tuesday this past week, I got another 2 a.m. text. But it said, hey, I just I work at Denso. I just got off. I just saw your Craigslist post, all this stuff. I'm really interested in the property. And blah, 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 blah. No, Friday night or Saturday morning, whatever, 2 a.m. Saturday morning, whatever that is to you, it's nighttime to me. It's, sleeping time. It's sleepy time, for sure. It's z -ville, okay? I'm not dealing with anything then. It, they must have had the tequila. <laughs> because hey, wit. it was misspelled, bad grammar. It was just a, it wasn't foul. It wasn't wrong, but it was just really inconsiderate. And I was in a grumpy mood anyway, so they got the short end of my answer. Oh, boy. And I basically told them, because the sum of what they were trying to get to is could they have an application to rent one of my apartments and i basically told them no anybody that would text me at 2 a.m <laughs> over an application with misspellings and just slurs that's not going to be a tenant that i want long term that's not my ideal tenant like that's not who i want in my properties because they're probably not going to take care of stuff and if they text me at 2 a.m the first weekend then they're going to text me at 2 a.m yeah. every weekend for the next year and i don't have time for that so I very kindly, shortly, and tried to be professional, told them that no, they were not getting an application and they could not go see the property and I didn't want to hear from them again. <laughs> so I get a lot of texts and as long as you can kind of back it up, like the person that texted me earlier this week and they just got off at Denso, I, I was fine with them. They just got off work. That's fine. You explained yourself. You weren't, I don't even know what in the text, but... Please, if you're going to text somebody at 2 a.m., make sure something is on fire. 
and you're calling to let them know that the fire department is on their way, which good, thank you, I have insurance, I'm not coming. <laughs> but thank you for calling the fire department. Thank you for letting me know I'll be there in the morning. Uh, the next step is don't text me at 2 a.m. I can't think of another reason why I would need a 2 a.m. text message. I mean, I'm not in college anymore. I'm a married woman. I don't need a text at 2 a.m. for anything. Can Can you think of another reason somebody would need to text me at 2? I don't know, about the sewage backing up, something like that. If you're in one of my lease option houses, call the plumber. If you're in one of my apartments, okay, fine. But really, at 2 a.m., you're probably just going to need to go next door and ask your buddy. Not going to come out with a plunger? Um, I'm just not going to do it. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry. I'm not. So anyway, if you um, are in a situation, off topic completely, but if you need some gravel, either for a building project or for the driveway or for, uh, you know, you're putting up a pole barn, whatever you might need gravel for, Walker's Truck Contractors has gravel and they will travel. Please call them at 865 865- 933-0225. You're listening to Whitney Nicely. All real estate, all the time. Oh, no.